Hey there, I'm Sean from ARRI, and this is how to build the lightweight set for Alexa 35. The first thing we're gonna do is to flip the camera upside down. So just make sure that the ECS antenna is out of the way, and then you can unscrew the two Wi-Fi antennas here, which are these nice hard plastic robust antennas, but it's just better if we pull them off. So we can turn the whole thing upside down, and then grab the BUD1. So this is the Balance Utility Dovetail BUD1. And it basically is the plate we're gonna leave on the Alexa 35 for pretty much every kind of rigging scenario. It has a much wider dovetail here than the one you would find in say a Mini LF set, which means that it's you know, a little bit more stable side to side, which is nice. And it attaches in five places instead of four. So there are four screws at the front and there is one screw at the back here. Now, when you're putting it on, just get all the threads started first. Make sure the screws are all aligned and in their holes, and then you can go through and just give it a bit of a nip up. They're not, you, know, you don't really have to crank down on these screws here. They just need to be firmly finger tight and they will stay there. So now we can turn the whole thing the right way up. On the top of the camera, we're gonna place this plate. This is the universal adapter plate, UAP3, and it is the smallest plate for the Alexa 35 that still has centered holes. So it will work on the top and the bottom. Now, this little bump here goes to the front and these little wings are at the back because that's where you would attach the top extension bracket if you'd like to run it. So again, four screws. Now you'll notice that in this plate, there are a whole heap of M4 holes, all spaced 20 mil apart. That is the standard for say an RMB3, which you also get in this kit. So you can grab this and put it up here for a rod, maybe a viewfinder cross pipe, or you can do little you know, rod mounting stuff like this or have it at the front. So if you wanna run a really lightweight viewfinder setup, that's one way you can do it. Now, the next piece you can choose to use, it's obviously optional, is the TEB1, that's the top extension bracket. So to get this on, I would recommend that you open up the UAP3 screws just a half turn so that there's a bit of wiggle room there because this plate needs to slide into two holes and then I would attach the back screw first. So that will screw into a hole in the top at the back of the camera and then you have one screw on the, uh, each side that pulls the UAP3 and the TEB1 together. So that's this little angled screw right here. And then we can do these up again. Nicely finger tight is great. So the TEB1 does a couple of things. It gives you obviously a lot more accessory mounting options here. And if you had one of the articulated mounting plates, which is in the production set, and of course you can buy separately, then that would mount perfectly just here so that when you're running a transmitter on the side of the camera, you can flip it up and out of the way to still get access to the ports. It's a pretty cool new idea. So now is probably the time to put our antennas back to the right position. We can screw in the Wi-Fi antennas again. If you have to pull off the Wi-Fi antennas for any reason, then I'd recommend that you turn off the Wi-Fi in the camera. So just make sure that those are finger tight. We're all good. Okay, top handle. So this is kind of the cool part about the whole lightweight set really, I think is the lightweight camera handle. It only weighs 220 grams and there's a little wing nut screw here which we can unloosen and then the whole top rod will slide along. So when it's on the camera you can really find a great place for your hand to sit where it's balanced and you can run around with the camera kind of in your grip. Now the lightweight camera handle can go in two positions. You can go here or you could flip it around and go here. Totally up to you and then of course slide the handle forward. I'm going to put it in this way. Now, the reason that these screws are so much bigger than the others is because it speaks to the philosophy behind all of these accessories. The, the plates that you screw directly into the camera body are designed to be as rigid and small and lightweight and compact as possible and so that you don't have to take them off when you're going into a gimbal or a Steadicam or some other rig. The accessories that sit on top of those plates, like this handle, can then be tightened and loosened without tools so that you can quickly take them off and change between different modes of shooting. Now, I've already told you about this sliding back and forward. The other nice thing with this handle is that there is space here to leave a gimbal top plate um, while the handle is still attached. So we will be selling this. This is the adjustable top plate for the Movi, and it is a nice little plate we can run in here that comes with a little 
Delrin block, which has a couple of screws in it, you can see here, because depending on what kind of top plate you're running it on, you would need different sizes of screws. So you would take those out and screw them in here, and then you can leave that underneath, and then maybe choose to take a SAM5, which is a stabilizer adapter plate, which goes under here, which is for the bottom side of the Modi. So you can see how you can quickly change from you know, a lightweight setup like this with a handle and a base plate to one that will slide straight into a Movi, no tools required. So we've done that. Now, take note that there are, of course, spaced M4 holes here, a 3 8 and a quarter inch hole. So you could put a rod mounting bracket up here as well, or a monitor arm or anything like that. If you unscrew the back of this lightweight camera handle, which is the side that doesn't have the screw mounting holes at the front. So you unscrew this, then we can take the BHA1, so this is the balance harness adapter, and this is designed for suspension rigs where you would wear a vest like an easy rig and it dangles down, and particularly it works really well with the easy rig. And we have those little chrome balls that you put into the BHA1. There's a quick release mechanism for the U-Easy rigs, and that's designed to screw in here so that when you find a good position for your handle, you can still slide this back and forth to make sure that the Easy rig is balanced as well. I've also used this as a monitor mount, and you can slide the whole viewfinder thing out the uh, top pipe here, the carbon top pipe, put this on, put this in here, and then use one of those really small little monitor mounts with a seven inch, kind of a more modern way of operating than running a viewfinder, which is pretty nice. So I'll put this back in the normal position and then just chuck the stopper on the end to make sure it doesn't fall off. And then we can lock that. Now, mounting a viewfinder. There are a couple of options. The one that comes with this set is using the holes that are found up the front here on top of the lightweight camera handle. So you'll notice that there is obviously 3 8 a quarter inch and two M4s here. So we're gonna take the RMB3 I'll just tighten this off and we're going to screw that in here so it can go upwards like this or you can flip it around which I might do. Screw this into the front of the top handle and then we're going to take the cross pipe which is basically half of an MVB1 if you're familiar with the viewfinder bracket from the Mini. We'll remove this little stopper that's here on the end so this unscrews like so. And then we can slide this through. Make sure you've undone the clamp on the RMB3 first because that really helps. You put that through, put the stopper on the end, and then you have the standard viewfinder mounting. So you can still slide the whole handle forward and backwards if you need to get the position of the viewfinder just right. Single clamp here, obviously big range of motion. You can then use viewfinder extension brackets and all that kind of stuff as well. And bear in mind that because this is a cylinder, you will have to just make sure that it is completely level but once you've locked it off and done it, it's a big clamp, it'll hold it quite solidly. So MVF1, sorry, MVF2 will slide right in here. Make sure the lever's at the top, that's the unlock position, push down to lock it. Then you can take your viewfinder mounting, uh, sorry, your viewfinder cable, which of course is the lovely Co-Express cable, and plug it in to the bottom side of the viewfinder. And that's the lovely cable you can turn around while it's in the hole. There's no keyway or anything, single pin, really nice design. I'll just bring that back a bit. All right, so that is one way you can mount the viewfinder. You'll notice that you also have this. So this is the LWS6. It is the lightweight support for 15 mil rods. And in this configuration, this will mount directly to the UAP3 like this. You'll notice that you can't put it up here in the other holes, which are for the lightweight camera handle because, which is intentional, so that you make sure that the rods here are optically centered and that way you could run a map box like an LMB 4x5 with 15mm lightweight rods upside down and it would be in the right spot for the lens. So we can screw that on there. Now this will also, of course, screw directly into the camera handle because you might not need to run a top plate at all and the lightweight camera handle will connect directly into the screw holes on the top of the camera and then you can still have rods. So if we have this here, you might like to also consider purchasing the VAB1, that is the viewfinder attachment bracket, which was for the Amira and basically gives you the parts that you need to create a MVB1. So it looks like this. It doesn't come in the set, but a good optional accessory to pick up. And then you can run this in here if you prefer to run top rods for lens motors or if you want to run a viewfinder like this. Side brackets. Now the side brackets are pretty much the same as the production set. 
you'll pick it up and you might notice it's quite heavy. It's, you know, a, a bit of an unusual thing, but there's a really good reason behind that. And that's because we know so many people run uh, lens motors from the side brackets. So these were designed to be as stiff as possible and they're actually made from steel. They've had all the weight taken out of them as possible but still remain an incredible amount of rigidity that you just can't really get with aluminium. So these are little side brackets here which screw on and then you can put an RMB7 or RMB3, sorry let me undo this first, onto the side bracket with these spaced M4 holes and then run a rod down the side to mount your lens motors is the way we're seeing most assistants run them now. Of course, at the bottom there is an Arri rosette, so that would be for hand grips and hand grip extensions, and we have 3 8 and quarter inch holes once again. On the right side of the camera, we have a very similar thing, but we also get an extension. So this is two parts. You can separate them, and it's nice then that the one that wouldn't hold the rod is aluminium, so it's that little bit lighter, and we can put this onto the side and have Heaps of accessory mounting options. Great for you know time code boxes and stuff like that. L cubes. Let's put this in. So four screws. And notice as well, it's really nice that these screw directly into the camera body, whereas on previous camera designs, they've screwed into the top plate. So if you wanted to change the top plate, you also had to take off the side brackets first, which can be a little frustrating. So that screws in nicely there. And then we have an RMB7. Now this RMB7 on this side will work really well with the single 90mm and single 150mm long stainless steel lightweight rods. So that's a 19mm diameter lightweight stainless rod and the 150mm for example is the perfect length for signature primes. And then you can just drop two Seaforce mini motors on there, it works really well. 90mm is good if you have much smaller glass like super speeds or some rehouse stills glass, something like that. So this can mount in a bunch of different positions and it looks very similar to the RMB3 we're using up here, but it's just that little bit more prof low profile so that it's easier to fit into gimbal rigs and into the Trinity in particular. Now, on the back, we haven't talked about the back yet, but the back has this hole here where the B-mount adapter goes. So this would slot straight in, sits flush with the back of the camera, works really nicely. I just want to point out that we also have two electronic modules. One is the power distribution module, which comes with the production set that gives you seven extra power outputs. And this is the audio extension model. So this is module. So this is a really high quality audio uh, module for the camera that you can put of course, line level signals into, but it's also the way that you get microphones into the camera. So this is a two channel microphone preamp. It's exceptionally high quality. We actually think it's the best going microphone preamp in any camera and that would bolt in and then our B-mount adapter would bolt in just in front of it. So that doesn't come with a lightweight set, but it's something I really recommend you look at. It also has two power outputs. So that gives you a total of four on the camera. So you can run just about any accessory now. Four screws for the B-mount adapter on the back of the camera. And then the next thing we're going to look at is the shoulder pads. And the lightweight set comes with two options for base plates. One is my favourite part, and that is this, the CSP2. So this is a very kind of long and comfortable, lightweight, tiny shoulder pad which would slide directly under the camera. So you'll notice it has a cutout here to follow the contour of your shoulder. So you make sure that that's pointing towards the side that you're operating on and then slides directly into the bud one like so and you'll pass a safety stop there. And then you have this huge range of motion to adjust for balance on your shoulder and then clamp at the front. Now there are two little feet at the front and at the back for this so that you can set it down on a table. You're not just resting it on the cushion. And to me this kind of you know, harks back to how we used to run 16mm cameras like the SR3 which had a flat base and it's a really nice way to get a low centre of gravity camera rig because there's hardly anything in there and it sits great on your shoulder. The one downside with this is that it doesn't have any rod mounting options. So in the lightweight set you also get this guy which is the BPA6. So the BPA6 is a combination rod console so you can put two lightweight 15mm rods in here and of course there's this nice soft little small shoulder pad at the back. There is also this thing here. So this is an optional part of the BPA6. You can of course unscrew it with four screws, but it's designed to be a touch and go 35 plate, which is the standard that you'll find in a Euro plate, but also plenty of other tripod adapters. And then you have a snap plate, which will be permanently mounted to the bottom of your camera. 
it's kind of hard to lose. And it, because it's not connected just with center mount screws, you'll find that it won't start to twist like some of the other ones will. If you don't want to use that, well, there's another option. I can unscrew this little adapter at the bottom, four screws. I should also mention there are uh, centered quarter and three eighth inch holes here so that you can put just a normal, well, not a normal, but a, a different kind of tripod snap plate there, should you wish to. So let's take this off. And now we've revealed a couple of other holes. So for starters, you still have the centered holes, so you could put a snap plate onto here for your tripod. It is now a very slim line, also very lightweight um, piece of hardware here. And you'll notice that we also have these offset holes. Now it just so happens that this plate is exactly the right height for a traditional bridge plate. So this is a BP-8 for Studio 19 mil rods, and then you drop the two little you know, retracting pins here into the holes at either end, and then two screws to do it up. I'm not gonna put this all the way in, you get the picture, but that is how you would run a traditional, you know, very mechanical, simple bridge plate that doesn't have the quick release mechanism that is inside the CBP-5 and the CBP-6. So, that kind of brings us to the end of the video. These are all the accessories in the lightweight set for the Alexa 35. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for coming all the way to the end and uh, happy shooting. We'll see you in the next one.